okay let's get started so this is part one of the uh, tutorial series uh, so here uh, i will show you how the uh, texture is done for the uh, grass blades uh, it is a very simple uh, simple texture based on uh, somewhat similar grounds as for the uh, gdc talk on ghost of tsushima so i'm not following uh, exactly the the same techniques but i am trying to achieve somewhat similar to it but the, the major difference is that in Ghost of Tsushima uh, they used uh, just one single texture for the uh, for the grass blade um, but in our case uh, we'll be creating an atlas so in this atlas uh, we have about four parts uh, the uh, the first part you see here uh, on the left is the uh, is the main uh, main grass blade uh, middle is the uh, is the stem for the flower. Uh, this is the uh, flower itself, uh, so which was download, downloaded from uh, Mega Scans, or you can say Quixel library, uh, and then just um, just brought brought into Substance Designer and just I just adjusted the the transforms and everything. So just to get this effect, uh, then there is a uh, there's a, there's a small blade here. Uh, looks like a grass blade, but this will be used as the uh, as an extension uh, for the flower top stem, uh, top of the stem. Uh, so this will be the three D view. So how it is done is like it is very simple. Uh, so you start with a shape uh, like this, then uh, just apply a transform just to extend it up, so so you can get a grass blade. Then slightly blur it just to get that edges uh, so softened out. Then uh, just just transform this uh, along the uh, horizontal axis uh, to to uh, to squeeze it into a, a line. So I'm trying to get that uh, little bit of uh, uh, bumpiness for the middle of the grass blade. Then just uh, use a uh, again a blur blur grayscale uh, blur HQ grayscale. Then I blend this blur this again. Then blend these two. As you can see, there's a small seam in the middle. Uh, so uh, then, then just just cut out the alpha at the uh, at the uh, edges. Uh, then this one is a is a white white color that, uh, that is uh, passed through a transformation node, uh, and just uh, scale it down horizontally. Then blend uh, blend these two. So I got the grass blade and also this uh, stem. Only the grass blade will have normals because stem is just a, a cylinder. Uh, it it doesn't need a normal because it it, it already has the mesh uh, on it. So only this uh, only this grass blade uh, need need to have that fake roundness to it. So normal will be like this, uh, like, like, like it's very soft. Uh, then then everything will be, uh, then th this is the uh, color. So the blade color comes from a simple gradient. So it starts from uh, pure green. Then uh, at the bottom is like an yellowish green, a uh, slightly muddy looking green. Then, uh, then I then th th this is the uh, stem. Uh, stem is like so. I just named it stem spike. I don't know what it is called. So it is something like uh, uh, this uh, on like on the flower. You see that this kind of uh, spike that comes out at the uh, at the tip of the of the flower. So that is uh, done through a texture. So this actually uh, is this this texture downloaded from uh, Quixel library. Yeah, then it also has a normal. Then use a material transform uh, just to get it get it, get everything. So I have three uh, three channel opacity, normal, and the base color. Just transform them and just uh, position it here. Then then just using a material multi material blend, I blend all these uh, to, to, together all the uh, three sections so one is the base is the uh, grass blade and the uh, and the stem then combine it with this stem spike and the flower so flower is again uh, another you know uh, uh, texture i found on quixel i think i took this part out and just use a material tra transform just to get that that part out then blend uh, blend these two into a into a color id then use a material multi-material transform to blend all these. Then, uh, then I'm passing it through a dilation. So dilation node, this one I got through uh, ArtStation. Uh, there was uh, like it is, it is not that expensive. 
maybe five dollars you use this some something you can you can get it uh, then dilation is uh, is really good to fill up the uh, the space around the alpha so so that you won't see any leaks on it then I affect dilation on the color and also the normal so then once you take take, take out the final texture it looks like this with alpha and this is the normal and opacity map will be uh, is actually merged into the uh, into the color because we need to uh, we need to export a TGA because TGAs uh, have alpha channel so this uh, so this base color is 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 uh, it's already combined with uh, with, with alpha so if you look at the export settings um, you can see that there there's base color normal Reference and opacity. Opacity, I'm actually exporting just just because like if I need to check it here to see if the how the opacity map is like working or, or, or not, I can just check it so right right here, not by click, clicking into this alpha channel. So it'd be much easier if I have a separate text texture. This is exported, but it's not used in the uh, final grass. So that is how the texture is done. It is very simple and straight straight straightforward. The final size is uh, 512 by 2048. Because I only need uh, the the height, the width can be really small, so we can optimize it. Uh, so so this is the uh, texture atlas for the for the grass plate. So this is the only texture I use for the entire grass, uh, for the whole scene. Uh, now we'll jump jump into uh, Houdini and uh, and create the grass plate. Okay. Now inside Houdini, uh, so now we have a fresh you know clean slate. Uh, there's nothing here. Uh, so this is uh, Houdini apprentice. Uh, you can see that it is non non commercial up here. Uh, so why he says non commercial is that this uh, this uh, this cannot be used for any uh, for any commercial production. So this is only for uh, free you know testing. Uh, you can just try it out. Uh, it's like kind of trial version, but it has all the tools and everything included. Only thing they don't include is the uh, I mean one of the things that they don't include is the FPX export option. Uh, because that is very powerful. Uh, in this case, we don't have it. So we'll start with uh, creating a, uh, a, a a grass blade first, uh, grass blade geometry. Then we'll create a spawn base for the grass blade geom geometry. So first, we'll start with a um, uh, with a uh, subnet mask. So why I'm using a subnet mask is that subnet mask is like a con con uh, container. Which we will use to create the HDA. So when I use a subnet mask, uh, just just uh, just create a sub a sub network. Um, so in sub network, I'm actually going to name it as uh, grass underscore HDA. So that so this will be the main uh, main HDA we'll be uh, using to uh, to create the final grass. So we'll start from here, uh, and I just save the file as. I will save it into uh, my uh, external hard drive so that this will be safe under Houdini. Uh, so I'm just name it as uh, grass underscore HDA underscore uh, zero one. You can just name name it anything you want, but it'll be saved as a uh, non-commercial version of uh, Houdini file. So jump into this uh, HDA net uh, this sub sub subnet so it will have uh, some some inputs uh, you don't have to do anything just move, move them to the side now now we need to uh, create a geometry node to uh, to start working so this is a geometry node i just name it as uh, grass as you can name anything you want then jump into the uh, geometry node now here uh, we will start creating all the node node network so uh, how you create a node is like like you either right click or you press tab. Uh, so these two, any of these will uh, create the the nodes. So here I have uh, I have hidden the property panel. Uh, so the uh, the option to hide hide and unhide is like if you press P, it's a toggle. So pressing P, it will it will it will hide the property panel. Pressing P again, it will unhide it. So we will start from a line. So just uh, just just uh, just press tab or right click and uh, and put a line so it will show up in the viewport as a simple line so i will name this as as uh, 
blade spine so this blade spine is used used as the uh, backbone for all the excuse me uh, grass blade grass blade actions uh, so here um, after this uh, blade spine is made uh, just turn on the, uh, the display points now we can see how many points are there in the uh, on the uh, on the spine so i see only two uh, so maybe we can just increase this to uh, maybe around eight you can see that there are eight eight points uh, make it ten you can, you can have uh, ten ten points on the uh, on the line right now uh, now if you if you want to see the point numbers uh, press on this we display point numbers toggle you can see that it is displaying from zero to nine so there are total 10, 10 points uh, on this curve now next thing what we need to do is uh, we need to uh, go and create a resample node so why i'm creating a resample node is because um, resample node has a uh, has a very important uh, parameter called um, curve view so this curve view uh, uh, attribute will be used in a uh, in a later stage for uh, some other kind of operation that that we will see in a later tut uh, uh, tut tutorial okay so if you if you look here when i turn off the uh, resample it is it is uh, it is uh, increasing the number of points to to 11 so here it is like 0 to 9 that means we have 10 10 points here is like 0 to 10 that means we have 11 points so I'm not going to not going to change anything here. Uh, you can just uh, try and play around with this, uh, like uh, like parameters and everything. So if you reduce the length, uh, it actually points numbers will uh, will keep going up. So I'll just adjust it back to uh, ten. I'll just be adjusting it to point one one seven. Okay, but you don't have to worry about it. Just just apply a resample node. Then after this, uh, if we are going to have we need to have a shape or you can say a, a cross section uh, so the cross section is like a like uh, like if you if you have worked with the uh, 3ds max you will know that there's a loft modifier so a loft modifier uh, they use a a, a a a spline and a shape to move through it so we also need a shape so that shape is called a cross section so also i'm going to use a line so if you go this line, this is the same same length length, length as the as the uh, spine. So I want to make make sure that it is it is it is not like I mean it's not this long, it has to be uh, very small. So in this line, I'm going to increase the number of points to three. Uh, I'll show you exactly why I'm using three points, and turn on the uh, point numbers, display point numbers. Now uh, I need to apply a midpoint so the uh, midpoint is like uh, selecting this uh, one of the points on, on this uh, line, line. Be before that I need to make sure that this is smaller than the main main uh, curve so you can actually uh, toggle this on uh, to display the uh, template so that you can see uh, the the, the uh, spine as a reference so selecting this uh, bring down bring down the le length of this cross section uh, make it make it like uh, this small maybe around uh, 0.18 or maybe 0.15 or you can say 0 0.2 uh, make it po 0.2 yeah 0.2 is good so keep it as 0.2 then name it as cross cross section so this is a cross a cro a cross section now now i need to select this uh, the middle point so for that i need to use a group group uh, sop so sell, sell the group now in the group i will just name name it as uh, midpoint midpoint so the group name also has to be mid, midpoint so now the midpoint is like selecting uh, like when you see this this this, this orange color i just turn this off so orange color means that it is selecting all the points right now so uh, i'll change this group type to uh, points okay 
so it's like only points and uh, change the base group to number one so that it selects only uh, point number one so if you can see there are three three points zero one and two when i change this group base group to one it is selecting only uh, point number one okay so so next next part is to uh, is to transform it so i'll use a transform sop here and uh, go to selection now under on, on transform i need to uh, specify which group i'm going to transform so change this group group to midpoint now when i now if i uh, change any of these translate it will translate only that that specific point so select, select, select this and just uh, use the middle mouse button to to uh, to scroll through you can see that this this point is being moved so translate uh, i think this point zero two five yeah so that is good so now we are moving this uh, point number one slightly along the x, x axis so this is good good as a um, as a shape or a cross section now next thing what we need to do, do is to um, bring this uh, cross section to zero 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 so i need to bring it down to the uh, world origin but for that we'll use uh, something called uh, match size so once you uh, like uh, put the match size on it will move this uh, cross section to the world origin so if you if you if you just change this uh, uh, preview so you can see that it's uh, it's moving now it's moved to the zero 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 you can see that the translate is on then use justify xyz as the center 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 so so that is the uh, match size sop so once we have a match 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 size now uh, we can adjust the the, the the scale of this cross section you don't have to adjust it but if you want to you can you can do it here again transform and in transform you can use the uniform scale to change the scale of this uh, cross section but we will wait till we make the grass play then we can change the size now keep it here uh, so this is uh, size now we need to uh, use a sweep um, sop so sweep sop, sweep sop is like a loft in 3ds max it needs a, a a path or a spline or the spline here uh, then also a shape or the cross section so use this first input as uh, as a curve and second one as the geometry so when i turn it on it it, it creates this uh, nice uh, you know geometry for the grass blade so turn off this wireframe i mean uh, point number and also this point a point display you can see that this this is a nice uh, little grass blade now now adjust the size so uniform scale uh, change it to this big because the grass blade is like uh, is a thin piece of geometry now if you press uh, shift w you can see the wireframe so this di displays this uh, grass blade very nicely okay so so that part is done now we will uh, just uh, keep it keep it like more organized so if you if you don't want to see this kind of uh, wires like in in this shape you can press shift s to uh, uh, to make it look more appealing now select all of these and press this button to get um a net network box so create a net the box double click here so this is grass blade so we made a graph gra grass blade geometry so now now what we'll do is uh, we'll try and apply the material on this so to apply the material what you need to do, uh, do is first of all you need the, you need, uh, you need the material right so uh, cl click tab and just type material and you can use uh, labs quick material to uh, to get a quick uh, look at the at how it looks in them in the uh, ones with all the textures applied so select this go to render mode and pick the base color 
so i'll be supplying all the textures with this uh, tutorial you can find the link in the uh, in the description below uh, <coughs> excuse me you got the projects um, and get your te uh, textures uh, so so i'll use a base color right now because i don't need no map uh, uh, so uh, i mean this is a little bit of early stage so i don't need that now okay now uh, i'll just I, i'll just keep, keep i mean i'll keep the wireframe on just to see uh, the the preview in the viewport so how to get it how to get the uv's aligned properly to the texture now uh, the whole mesh is like floating somewhere uh, where there is transparency that's why i cannot see anything there, that's why it became invisible okay so now apply a unwrap uv unwrap on it now after i apply the uv, UV unwrap you can see that the uh, the, te te the texture is like slowly showing through now what i need to do is i need to move this along the x-axis so change this perspective viewport to uh, uv viewport now the problem with uh Houdini is that it won't display the the uh, the texture by default you have to uh, specify it so press d on the keyboard uh, uh, which will bring up this display op display options under background change this to the, te 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 the texture which we just imported so that is the te uh, texture uh, don't worry about the uh, about the size because it is showing it as a as a square that's okay now we need to use a uv edit modifier here so uv edit now under select uv edit we're going to render then unlock this now you have to uh, select select the geometry here uh, primitives and select the uh, the uv then use this move tool and move this to the middle of this leaf over here because the, the, this is the leaf uh, the the grass blade now scale this along x axis that should be good now you can just go back to the, uh, the like if you go back, go back to the camera view that that means you're you're back in the rotate mode uh, so set view as uh, as as perspective so that is the perspective report you can see that the the uvs are properly done now uh, now we can see that the material is being displayed now what now what i'm going to do is i'll just uh, apply an an output sop so that you can see that the uh, the textures are properly displayed press tab and just uh, uh, type type in rop so rop in network is that we have we have an fpx out, uh, output but the export is disabled on this uh, we cannot use it so just use a rop geometry output so this will actually this will make it uh, easy for you to export uh, stuff from Houdini. so what we'll do is uh, under the uh, rop geometry uh, i'll just rename to <coughs> export obj okay then under this uh, change this output uh, file to wherever you want to save it so i'm just going to projects uh, our projects uh, then under blender because i'm going to import this into into uh, a into blender uh, name it as um, grass hda blender import just to know that the uh, the this is a proper file that i need to use use in blender then 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 one important thing you have to type dot obj because it doesn't show the the file extension automatically so you have to type it type type obj into it then accept now you have to click uh, save to disk so that it'll 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 save the file uh, as a as a as an obj uh, into the windows directory now you can just uh, just open blender i will just uh, remove all these basic stuff from here and in blender what i'll do is uh, file import uh, wavefront obj 
and go to this uh, specific drive blender import import wave from obj so now we have the uh, the the grass blade properly imported into blender okay so that is the uh, so that's the first first part where you create this grass blade inside Houdini, uh, apply the uh, the material, then you uh, apply a, a, an and and unwrap UVW, then you uh, edit the UVs, move it to uh, to the proper location on the mesh, and then use an output node to get all the output uh, properly displayed. Then you export this as an OBJ. Then after this, you import this into uh, into into Blender, and then uh, do the I mean do the further steps so in the next uh, next part of the uh, to tutorial we will see how to apply uh, how to spawn this uh, on a uh, on a base on a circular base okay and then also apply a bend on it a bend modifier export this into uh, into Houdini sorry export this in the blender and then from blender export into unreal so that will be what we'll be learning in uh, in in part two Thank you.